This is such an exciting pan, uh, uh, session to be in. So um, I'm going to present to you today a um, version of our paper, Designing Speculative Civics, which was authored by myself, uh, Tom Jenkins, and Thomas Lodato, all at the Georgia Institute of Technology. And what we do in this paper is we present a research through design project, um, and we call out three approaches to uh, reframing research through design that have to do with time, the relationship between design research and design time. And then we call out three themes uh, for, to take into consideration in designing around civics as a context. And the key aspect of this paper, which I'll get to, is that we really wanted to take the notion of design-led theorizing seriously to draw on uh, Gaber's notion of design as a pre-paradigmatic practice that doesn't begin with theory but begins with design and then tries to draw theory out of that. So there's some fantastic overlaps. Um, when we talk about speculating on civics, we're doing this in a, uh, we use this phrase to specifically locate our work in a kind of tradition and, and specifically place it against other sorts of practices in the civic tech field. So much of civic tech today is really oriented around uh, instrumental approaches and instrumental um, problem solving for things like communication between citizens and government and then the development of services such as apps that enhance that. This is a crucial thing to do in contemporary politics and contemporary civics and design, but it's not actually what we're interested in doing in this work. Instead, we're interested in, in placing our work as part of a longer history, a history alluded to by Mark that goes back to ideas that were developed in the 1960s from architects and urban planners who were doing work in collectives like Super Studio and Archigram that really saw design as a means not to necessarily intervene in the civic condition, but as a way to use designerly techniques to imagine what the consequences of technologies in those civic conditions might be. So we really, then when we talk about speculating on civics, what we're trying to do is to contrast our approach with a lot of the urgency and near-term solutionism that tends to describe most contemporary civic tech. And we do this by envisioning civic conditions and then designing around them. So I want to be very clear that this work is not about engagement. We have other projects that are about engagement, but this work is about our practice as designers and then thinking through that practice. So there's multiple connections to the Kai community. Um, as I was writing these slides, I noted that it seems like all the connections are in the UK. I'm sorry about that. Um, but connections to the work that's happening in digital civics, um, at Newcastle, the sustainable and connected cities work at UCL and ICL, and work at places like Interaction Research Studio with some of the ideas around data and community. So we situate this as part of, again, a larger notion of a kind of constructive design research that's about making things in order to understand other things. We're not interested in actually developing these products or services and deploying them in the world, but creating them as a way to understand the conditions, in this case civics, that we want to study. So again, we can trace this through ideas of constructive design research. We can take very seriously this notion of design research as a pre-paradigmatic practice, a practice that doesn't need theory to justify its starting points. Um, and then also look at this as a continuation of an idea of using public design as a way to articulate issues, of design as a way to draw out what the factors are of a given issue and then to explore them. So, we did this through a series of projects that myself and my collaborators undertook over the span of multiple years. Each of these projects was motivated by different questions and different personal experiences. And then we came back to these projects at a certain point to try to find commonalities or themes out of them that we could use to help us understand our work, the context of civics, and to generate new ideas. So there's three projects that I'm going to present to you today. Um, each of which led to a different notion of civics. The first is the division of domestic data, which led to an idea of mediated civics. The second is a project called Data Democracy, which led us to an idea of computed civics. And the third is Drones for Foraging, which led us to an idea of proxied civics. So, the division of domestic data was a research through design project that was about divorce and about the ways in which divorce is handled in digital media and digital systems or rather the way in which it actually is not handled, particularly in the site we were exploring, which was the case of divorce in the city of Atlanta. So 
what the designer did is looked at the conditions of divorce and began to see the ways in which divorce really changes configurations of the user and the idea of the user as a single unit, right? And when that happens, when divorce happens in a civic context, what we encounter are a series of rules and regulations that have to do with the dispersal of property. So it's interesting to note that there are rules and regulations for who gets the dog and who gets the car and who gets the house and who gets the kids, but there's actually nothing on the books for who gets the Netflix account or who gets the Netflix profile. And the question that we wanted to ask was, how do, we, how, do, how, do, how do these systems get mediated? How do we begin to think about how these systems have to be redesigned? How do we have to design for this as a kind of civic context? And what are the ways in which we represent that? So what's important is that we decided not to design the system itself. And we characterize this kind of work then as a kind of design research before design time. We were conducting our design research before the design of any actual systems took place as a way to begin to highlight what the traces of those systems might be, what the representations of them might be, but not the system itself. So what did we do? We engaged in one of the most mundane activities of information design known. We designed icons, hundreds and hundreds of icons, with the idea of asking, how do we look at common things such as files and folders and networks and the activities that take place around them? And how do we think about how those are represented in systems that have one notion, one configuration of the user, and how we have to redesign those to represent other configurations of the user? And so what you see here are just some of the sketches for different kinds of icons that were meant to represent things like escrow servers, files that were locked, files that required mutual review, files that were requiring untagging. And we went systematically through all these changes of state and design icons for them as a way of thinking through what these systems would have to handle by thinking through how we would have to represent those states. And then we place those into different contexts, such as, for example, here you see icons placed on what would be a shared Instagram feed, asking for different activities to take place around them, such as untagging, sharing rights. And we use this then as a way to think about how does this change happen? How would we design around this? And then what does this tell us about the kind of design of these systems in the near future? The second project that I'll talk about is a data democracy project. And data democracy project really tried to engage a lot of the rhetorics around big data and notions of digital democracy and the ways in which the digital might enable a kind of new kinds of participation. And so what it did is it looked at sort of the conflation that happens in neoliberal tactics around the ways in which the conditions of business are conflated with the conditions of citizenship and paired that with discussions that are currently going on about mining social media as a way to trace affect and preference and looked at how those get brought together into a model of what might be a new kind of direct democracy. And the question that we asked is how do we make possible or how do we make this possibility of a data-driven democracy able to be present for a kind of material, empirical critique by actually designing a system like that. So we characterize this as a kind of design research at design time, where the design research took place through the actual design of a prototype system that we were trying to inquire into. So what this system did is it was a simple web page um, in which you could go to and you could uh, and it asked a question. Sorry, you may not be able to see that there, but it asks the question, how does Atlanta feel about blank? And you could enter in a search term and press submit, and then what would be returned is a map and a graph that began collecting that information over time. So as you submitted the term, what would happen is the system would look for geolocated tweets within five miles. It would place, that contain that keyword, it would place that tweet on a map, and then perform a simple sentiment analysis. What became fascinating about this was the way in which we began to discover slippage in these kinds of systems, the way in which a search on traffic, we expected to be complaints about you know, speeds on I-75 and I-85, and instead what we got were complaints about Comcast. The third project, briefly, is a project called Drones for Foraging, and Drones for Foraging is an ongoing project with a collective in Atlanta called Concrete Jungle that collects fruits and vegetables and gives them to those in need as a way of supplementing uh, local food supply for food shelters, homeless shelters, other kinds of places. 
And the question we were asking with this project is how can we think about foraging as a kind of civic service, a means of provisioning a sort of informal system of care, and how could we imagine how those practices would get combined with the practices and technologies of industrial and precision agriculture and logistics. And this really then became a kind of question about how do we explore the designing across scales and ways in which we might appropriate technical practices and technical systems. And we characterize this as a different kind of design research, the kind of design research after design, where we're not interested in actually creating the, pro the drone itself, but using the drone as a pre-existing artifact and designing around it after it's already been created. So what we did for this project was sort of common interaction design. Um, we got the drone, we flew it around the city, we ruined lots of pear trees as we flew the drone into them. Um, we tried to figure out, we did basic usability testing with this. Is this really viable? What would this look like? How might this happen? And we began testing different kinds of software to think about how might we use existing off-the-shelf tools to do things like spot pears on a tree and count them. And this really became a way of us exploring the possibilities of what might be by bringing these two spaces and practices together and by thinking about how these technologies move across scale to enable new kinds of civic systems. So each of these projects was conducted, and it was conducted as a way not to produce a final working version of the system, but to give us something that we could reflect upon, right? to give us something that we could use to think back. Because the question that was really motivating us was not how to build sentiment analysis, was not how to make drones work, was not really how to build systems to manage digital property and divorce. Right? The, questions that were really motivating us is how do we understand civics in the 21st century and how do we use the kinds of designerly activities that we are involved in to shape the kinds of interpretations and opportunities that we're going to provide for ourselves to design within. And again, we did this through a very sort of systematic process, um, which is, I have no idea how it falls in the problem-solving um, domain, but we can talk about that later. Um, but it was a systematic process of first imagining civic conditions, like what are these conditions? What are the conditions of divorce? What are the conditions of um, uh, data democracy? Designing for those conditions, reflecting on our design things, and here really taking, um, owning our background as scholars within the humanities and doing a kind of collective and collaborative close reading of our projects together over time. And then stepping back from that and asking ourselves, how does this make us think about civics differently? So from this, we came up with three themes about civics, um, which I want to touch on briefly. And we use these themes as both ways to analyze and characterize our own work, and we believe as generative frames for producing new RTD projects. So the first is a kind of what we called a mediated civics, and we drew this from the uh, project on the division of domestic labor, where in this case, civics is really about regulation and procedure with regards to rights. And then what you see in this is that order, ordinary activities that have nothing at all to do with civics initially, saving a file, deleting a file, tagging a file, are mediated into activities with civic significance as the relationship between the parties involved change. And so what this means as implications for design is that we need to think about the ways in which design systems at one and the same time work to arbitrate the relationships between individuals and work on behalf of the state to constitute and decompose what counts as a civic unit. And the challenge then is to really think about how the categories of citizenship, how different kinds of civic identities are multiple and dynamic in the ways in which we need to develop corresponding complexity in our computational systems. The second idea um, is what we call computed civics. And in many ways, this is a common thing to most of us. This is, the, this is the way in which you see civics more often than not being talked about, particularly in discussions uh, around smart cities and things like that. Where you begin to see a shift from not about being about the quantified self to the idea of the quantified community. And civics then are reduced to those events and phenomena that can be traced and represented computationally. And if we think about theories of civics that already exist, right, if we bring design experience to these theories of already, that already exist, in some ways we're moving from Schutzen's notion of the informed citizen to the idea of the citizen as information. So the implications for this for design is that we have to rethink the way in which we deal with publics, which are a topic for, of importance for many of us in HCI and design and participatory design. And what happens here is that publics are still issue-oriented, 
but they are also and at the same time information oriented. Publics are defined in part, in large part, by the ways they're constructed from data, metadata, and their attributes. And what becomes interesting is that issues matter, but issues matter only to the extent by which they're marked by data and can be computationally tractable. The final category of civics that we came up with, we drew from our Drones from Foraging project, which was an idea of what we called proxied civics. So proxy civics are civics where government and governmentality is enabled by extra state services. And you see two common trends of this. One, you see the sort of normal trend of outsourcing. And you also see this in activities such as what Megan um, Bowler and Matt Ratto have called DIY citizenship, where civics is actually now hybrid. And we have to think about it as a combination and an interleaving of both informal and formal systems of care. And in this case, systems and devices play an important role to the extent that they thwart different modes of action between publics. So these implications is when we think about activities of material participation, the ways in which we participate in contemporary politics and civics, it's not simply through construction or making anew, but also through activities of imaginative use, reuse, and appropriation. And as designers, this makes us think about the ways in which material participation happens, not simply through the invention of products and services, but through practices of infrastructure, of connecting others together. So by way of conclusion, what we hope to do in this talk is, and in the paper much more fully, is to begin to show how we can use RTD as a way to articulate civic conditions and consequences, and the ways in which we can use the kinds of prototypes that we created by thinking about different notions of design time, design research before design, design research at design time, design research after design, as different ways of either creating traces of systems, functional systems, or the imaginative use of existing systems. And that the themes that emerge from this design-led practice can be useful for both understanding our work and for generating new ideas. So I want to be the first to acknowledge there's serious limitations with our approach here. In large part, it has to do with who we are and imagining civics. We're imagining civics from a primarily Western democratic perspective amongst three men of various ages of youth um, <laughs> who fit certain norms. And if we really want to take this approach seriously, we need to expand our ideas of what civics are and think about civics from different perspectives. But we hope that the, one of the key things that comes out of this paper is the value of a design-led theorizing, the value of really taking seriously this notion of design research as a pre-paradigmatic theory, which doesn't need to lead with what ideas of civics might be, but instead, through design, can generate its own notions of what civics are and the role of design within those practices. Thank you. I'm Michael Muller, IBM Research. I think I'm going to ask you a very stupid question. I got the impression, and I hope I'm wrong, and I hope you'll tell me exactly how I'm wrong, that the designers were designing at thinking about a civic through some notions of technologies and systems. And I wasn't sure who got to be a designer, and I wasn't sure where the people were in the designed at things. And please tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, so uh, you're, you're right. And, and, and um, you're right. I mean, we, we approached this as a project that was um, undertaken by three people who are professional design researchers, for lack of a better term. And that's why we're very clear in the paper, and I want to be clear here. This is, you know, a lot of our work actually is community-based PD. This is not that work, right? This is work in which we're making a strong claim that designers acting as designers through this kind of exploratory work on their own can actually produce theoretical insights. So this isn't to say that there isn't the opportunity and the need to work with others, um, but that there also is an opportunity to work as designers alone. Thank you. I guess I'm hoping that next year you'll tell us about that work with others. Thanks. Yes. See you at PD. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. Uh, Tappan Parikh, UC Berkeley. So I, I have a question. I mean, do you think of what you're doing right now as a form of civics, you know, the, the giving this talk, writing this paper, you know, is that a form of civics? And if it is, you know, how does it relate to the other forms of civics that are situated in another time?